Duncan Hunter of California, Democratic Congressman Tim Wallace of Minnesota. Congressman Hunter, uh, you're doing well. You won that little straw vote out in Arizona. Are you on your way to winning the Republican nomination? Out of a, of a strong national defense, a strong border, and bringing back some of those jobs we've lost on this one-way street for trade, especially to China, I think that resonates with the Republican base, and it obviously did in Arizona. How come we're hearing from very few national Republican senators, for example, who are really sort of out there with the president? You hear from Kyle, you hear from Cornyn, but there's so many you don't hear from, and then you do hear from the critics. What's going on, on the Republican Senate side right now? Well, if you're, if you're talking about Iraq, uh, obviously I don't have my ear to the ground over there, but uh, Chris, uh, let me tell you, I'm speaking, I'm speaking clearly. Uh, I don't care what you call it, uh, a surge, an increase. Uh, what the Republican president is doing is, uh, is sending reinforcements to Iraq to carry out his plan. And if the Democrats cut off reinforcements, the American troops will never forgive them, and I think the American people will never forgive them. I think the Republican senators should be loud and clear on that on that uh, issue. Well, what happens if the, Repub if the Democrats in the House don't cut off aid to the troops, they simply say no troop is going into combat without a certain level of training. No soldier will be asked to fight longer than a certain tour. Is that cutting off funding? Well, it is if you try to do it in an acute way. No, first, nobody goes into that uh, war without a level of training. And, level and nobody four. goes in without a flak jacket. I've, I've had uh, calls on that phony issue. We've got more than two sets of armor for every troop that's in Iraq right now, more than two. And, and so uh, they've got the right equipment. They've got the right preparedness. Uh, but cutting off reinforcements is something that's never happened in our history. I think the Democrats are tap dancing between this uh, this abyss of cutting off reinforcements and on the other hand trying to satisfy the more liberal base that says get out now. Congressman Walsh, that's a strong word. If you use the word reinforcement, it sounds like we're cutting off aid to guys in the field. That's the way the congressman put it. That's a tough fight uh, politically, isn't it, to say you're not going to send in reinforcements for guys yeah. who are pinned down? Well, Chris, that, of course that's not going to happen. The congressman is uh, using some terminology that he knows is trying to uh, incite that base of his. The fact of the matter is, on military the terminology. Uh, I spent 24 years in the military, uh, congressman, as a command sergeant major. I know that the American public knows what they know. They know the foreign policy experts, the military experts, and no one is, is saying that this is the way to go. This administration and this Republican Congress has failed to ask the hard questions about Iraq, and now they're trying to, to pull some new terminology, surge, uh, reinforcement, so those type of things on a failed policy. The American public is not buying it. I'm standing here in testament to that. What do you think, Congressman, both of you, of the Hillary Clinton proposal she put out late this afternoon in Washington to basically say the money we're giving to Iraq, to the government to build up its forces, will be conditional on whether they get serious about political reunion of that country between Shia and Sunni, and they, and they really try to stop these death squads. Congressman Duncan Hunter. Uh, Chris, I think, I think that's a disaster. I think this we're going back to the days when we had 535 secretaries of state uh, who started laying out the policy instead of the president. And let me tell you, reinforcements is what we're sending in. I've talked to the Commandant of the Marine Corps. They did request uh, Congress Walls, those those 4,000 reinforcements uh, for the Al Anbar province, that's Fallujah, that's Ramadi, that's a real war. So I don't know where you're getting your information, but they did call for reinforcements out there in Al Anbar. It's going to be a disaster if we don't send them. Congressman Walls, do you think Hillary Clinton's right in saying we should condition the money for the Iraqi army and where they do what they say they're going to do, take down these militia, distribute the oil money, stop this debathification, start uniting, uniting the country? We have to ask the question. The, the Al-Maliki government has shown us no reason to believe that they can keep to their promises or deliver on what they say they're going to deliver. In the terms of reinforcements, Congressman, uh, the 34th Division from Minnesota, those are National Guard troops that have been there for 18 months on their second deployment, and they're being asked to stay on longer. These aren't fresh troops being brought in. This is a failed policy that's asking these soldiers to continue to give and give and give with no strategic plan. So I think asking where every dime is going. During World War II, we held hearings constantly to ask those questions, and this Republican Congress has failed to. When we tried to ask the questions two years ago, we were called unpatriotic and cut and run and you can't change course. I ask the question now, Congressman Hunter, why since November 7th is the President willing to change course? It may have something to do with the political reality that the American people are tired of this. Yeah, my answer 
answer to you is ask all the questions you want, but don't try to stop troop movements after they've already begun. And after commanders in the field, like the, like the Marine commanders in Al Anbar, have said, we need those troops, we want those troops, we're doing good things out here, we need the 4,000 people. We have a plan, and that's a Baghdad plan with the nine sectors, uh, two Iraqi battalions or three Iraqi battalions being backed up by American battalion embedded forces. It is a plan, and if the Iraqis don't show up, uh, then we're going to have to deal with them if they're not committed to defending their country. But right now the president has a plan. He needs the extra people. That's reinforcements. I don't care how. And, and the people that really came up with the wordsmanship here were the Democrats who call this a surge and talk about deploying to the rear. That is not a surge. It's reinforcements. We need to support them. General, let me ask you first, Congressman Hunter, do you believe that the American people should continue to fight if it does become a civil war? Continue to stay in that country even if both sides look resolute in fighting to the death? No, here, here's uh, here's my what I, where I think our metric should be, uh, Chris. Uh, we are we've done two things in this in this 60 year old pattern of standing up freedom. We stood up a free government, and secondly, you stand up a military that's capable of protecting that free government. Now, once we we have stood up that uh, that 120 plus battalions of Iraqi soldiers, and they have the capability of protecting that government and the Iraqi government makes a political decision uh, that, they, that they will tolerate violence, that they don't want to go after al-Sadr and his people, that's a political decision that they make. We've done our job, we've, we've stood up a free government, and we've stood up the military that has the capability of protecting it. I think the government will hang on, Chris, because it's in their political interest to do so, and they do represent a majority of the country. Thank you very much, Congressman Hunter and Congressman Walsh. Up next, it's day two of Scooter Libby's trial. We'll have the latest from court at the courthouse. The hard boss, David Schuster, has been down there today.